Hi everyone, welcome to week one game season of the Bison video vlog. Along with Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. The countdown is over. Jeffrey, we're six days away from the opener of the 2012 season. Anticipation, not only just in Fargo or the Red River Valley, at a fever pitch to get the season underway. What is a fever pitch? I, I, think we're a gonna, high pitch. I, I think we're going to find out on Saturday night. Yeah, it's a game has been sold out for uh, about a, a month while. now. Yep. And it's... Um, you know, it, it, I'm really curious to see how this team will handle the success yeah. that it's uh, had bestowed on it for the last several months. Uh, everybody says and everybody on the team says they're handling pretty well. I guess we'll see what the focus is come Saturday night. Robert Morris comes to town. That's a familiar team for Bison fans. We'll get into them in a second. First, the news of the day. Uh, NDSU lost an offensive lineman for his career, Jeff Jervy. Highly touted kid out of Montevideo that the Bison were super high on. Go back to spring of 2011 when Craig Bull told you and I that he had a chance to be into the starting lineup. His career is over. That's a big loss for NDSU because that's a spot where Paul Kornick was at, and he was an All-American yeah. at that position. And it's so critical, especially with uh, in your passing game, to have the edge protected and in the running game, of course. You got a, a, a true fre or a redshirt freshman and Joe Hag yeah. who's never played a college game starting there. So that'll be a position to watch. That's the one I think both you and I will be focusing on. We have the entire fall camp. We will on opening night to see how the offensive line will play. Granted, it's an undersized defensive line they're going to be facing in Robert Morris, but this is the first time, so to speak, they're going to be seeing the live bullets. I'm not sure we'll really know the true test of uh, Robert Morris as far as uh, NDSU is concerned. Yeah. I mean, they're average 262 pounds on their D line, <laughs> which isn't a whole lot in nope. the Division I college world. Uh, maybe Colorado State would be a better test. As we look also, there's going to be a couple debuts that we'll get into more on Saturday that I'm really curious to see. And it's not a debut for Zach Bra. He played of the first half last year in the season opener against Lafayette before he got hurt. Obviously, he's a huge factor for the Bison this year. The other is number 23 and John Crockett. And I think everybody, uh, including the Bison coaching staff, is anxious to see what he can do. Yes, he's uh, showing a great ability to uh, break some tackles. Yeah. I think he's strong, elusive. And he's shown the ability, I think, uh, more than I've been. What I've been most impressed with, he hasn't shown rust. No, what I can not tell in practice, he's been. He hasn't played in <laughs> three years, if you think about it. Robert Morris, for Bison fans will remember, and they will always be etched into NDSU history, Jeff, because they uh, played the first, first playoff first game, game at the yep. Fargo Dome ever, and that was in 2010. The Bison ended up winning convincingly, 43 to 17. A couple of true freshmen that day stood out in Grant Olson and Colton Hegel. Hegel obviously has become a superstar in the Missouri Valley. Olson didn't play a ton last year but now he gets the mantle of playing at the middle uh, starting on Saturday night. Yeah, and those guys are responsible for Jeff Sinclair. Their quarterback yep. is back. He was 9-24 of with a, an interception that game. Uh, really had a tough time uh, finding any open receivers, and they really had a tough time getting anything going. It was 12,000 that day. You remember it was over Thanksgiving weekend, so mm -hmm. the students were gone. And it was loud. It was really loud that day. It's going to be ten times that on Saturday night. That's going to be it's be the biggest crowd ten Robert times. Morris has ever played in front of. Are we? Are, are you exaggerating things already? Probably. That's what I do in TV. Easy but. boy, easy. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I'm excited. Joe Walton is the coach of Robert Morris, former right. head coach of the Jets. So that's kind of cool. For me. All right, let's get on with it. <laughs> We promised last yes. week we would do our 2012 game-by-game -game predictions, which last year we drew some critical acclaim to that and also probably got harassed a little bit. I think you and I both agree that the season opener will be a win for the Bison, so let's look forward then to Colorado State, the FBS game this year where the Bison come in. They've won their last two. Now they go to a trip out to Fort Collins to play the Rams. What Bison do you have a great ability to find the teams at the right time when it comes to the FBS level. No doubt. First-year coaches, teams coming off poor years, and in this case, Colorado State playing at Colorado or at Mile High Stadium the yep. week before its rivalry game. Uh, what more do you want if you're North Dakota State? <laughs> you know, you have a, a new system you're playing, and um, I, I think NDSU wins this game. Jim McElwain comes in, the former offensive coordinator in Alabama. He brought a few of his guys uh, from the Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa to Fort Collins. I'm with you. I think the Bison win this game. I don't think it's by the convincing margin that some Bison fans have told me they'll win by three touchdowns. NDSU's still going to have to play a great game. It's just scholarship-wise, Jeff, they're 22 in the hole compared to what but CSU has. Craig Bowl knows how to play FBS he teams. Has. He really does. Prairie View is after that. That's one of the teams that has the longest losing streaks in <laughs> FBS or FCS history. I think we both agree that that's going to be a win considering the Honey Badger or Michael Dyer will not be playing for the Panthers <laughs> that night. Then we get to the fun part of the schedule. The conference opener for the second time in three years for NDSU is at Northern Iowa. No problem getting up for the Bison <laughs> if you're uh, looking for any motivational <clears throat> aspects of this game. They actually got drilled two years ago yes. down in Cedar Falls. Even though they only lost by a touchdown. It was a, it was a, The score was not as close as that. And 
this is a UNI team that is rebuilding of sorts. They have a tough schedule. They're at Iowa. They're at Wisconsin. <laughs> Uh, again, I see NDSU coming out with a close win here. This, I think, can define the Bison for 2012. I'm with you. I think they win the game. I think it'll be another close game because I don't think Northern Iowa uh, can be overlooked. But it depends on how they come out of those two games you just mentioned. If they come out and they play Iowa and Wisconsin to, uh, close, who knows then? Maybe that changes the whole trajectory of their season. But if they get beat up, as you well know, playing mm -hmm. against two Big Ten teams your first three games, it could be a long season for the Panthers. I don't know how you don't get beat up in those games. That's, those are two physical teams. The conference home opener is Youngstown State. I know every returning Bison player has that game circled just because what the Penguins did here last year. Uh, again, and it's homecoming. Again, it's, uh, there's, a, there's a motivational aspect of this game, too. With, uh, and Youngstown State game and NDSU games, they've been absolutely fantastic yep. the last three, four years. Coming down to the last possession, remember last year, the NDSU scores in the final minute, to, or two years ago. Two years win. ago. Youngstown, Youngstown yep. comes here and, and wins in a, in a great game. I think NDSU, with uh, with its defense, holds Kurt Hess in its offense. It's going to be a great game. Jameen Cook is one of the best running backs in the Missouri Valley. I have the Bison winning this game. I can't imagine them losing uh, to Youngstown two straight years. Do you remember when we were picking the NDSU at 4-7? and seven? It wasn't that long ago, was it? <laughs> Just a couple years ago, I think it was. Here's where you and I differ uh, with Indiana State. They come in with the best running back in all of FCS and Shakir Bell. The Bison contained him in 2011. I think... There's no way you're going to convince me they go through this league without a loss. I think this is where the Bison get tripped up. I think Indiana State, though, is looking for a new quarterback. Ronnie Fouch, I thought, was fantastic. NDSU knows how to play Bell. They know how to play smaller running backs. I think, uh, again, I'll go back to NDSU's defense. I think it's better than Indiana State's offense. Now, the second half of the schedule opens with a road game, so to speak. I'll put road it in, I'll put it in uh, air quotes there because the Bison play South Dakota. The game will be played in Sioux Falls. You and I have both reported that it's going to be a very pro-Bison crowd that day. Should be fun to see the Coyotes again. They don't have Dante Warren. This is a team obviously transitioning into the Missouri Valley for the first time. I think the Bison win this game. I'm hearing there's a billboard up saying don't let the Bison roam around yes. here. I bet the bus stops for about 10 minutes on its way down to <laughs> Sioux Falls. Southern Illinois comes to town after that. I would say this is a must-win season for Dale Lennon and the Salukis, but uh, they're going through a transition there. They lost their best running back who went to the NFL. They still have some question marks at quarterback. I think Bison get the job done against this one. Southern Illinois should have those answered by at, at this point in the season. You're talking October 27th. Again, I don't think they have the firepower to come in here and win. Both you and I have them winning at Missouri State, although we both said that in 2010 when the game NDSU had to have, and they lost 3 nothing in Springfield. And that was a uh, team, uh, NDSU, with down to its third quarterback. Uh, everybody day. was hurt. Uh, it just wasn't a very smooth operation at that point. The marker comes back to Fargo. Will the Bison win it for a third straight year? They will. I, I, I think their uh, South Coast State is still a year away, in my opinion. Opinion. They were so good two to three years ago yeah. with such a good defense. I think it's taken them a while to rebound from Watch that. for Austin Sumner, though. He was the freshman of the year in the Missouri Valley, the quarterback for the Jacks. He has all the makings of being a really, really good player in this league for the and, next couple And a lot years. for the Jackrabs, we'll see how Tyrell Cool goes from wide receiver yep. back to running back. The season finale should be fun. That's at Illinois State. That's where you have the Bison losing. Tell me why. I just, well, on that theory, I, uh, you just can't go through this league uh, undefeated. It's too tough. I have to, you have to pick and choose now. Where do you think they'll slip up? Yeah. I think the last game of the year, Illinois State's pretty good. They play well at home. NDSU struggled last time they were in uh, They lost that game at normal, normal yeah. Illinois. Yes, so... Uh, um, I'm taking Illinois State because uh, I think Illinois State has a lot more to prove than NDSU. The Redbirds, as you and I well know, were, they felt they got hosed out of the playoffs last year. They gave back Matt Brown as a fourth-year starter. They have some really good players at running back and wide receiver. This is a legitimate team. It will not be an easy game for And NDSU. they gagged the last game of the year. They did with Northern last Iowa. Year. At Northern Iowa, I, I just don't think that's going to happen two years in a row. For we the both have 10-1. and one. So what does that actually mean they go this year? Well, I think they're going to go 10-1 uh, and one and make the playoffs and host. Uh, you know, uh, again, I go, what, two, three years ago, we were picking, what, was it, four, four seven, four three, and seven, I mean, three and five eight. and yep. six. Mm -hmm. We're wondering, you know, what, what's what going to happen. That's yep. how far this program has come, and they've come this far for one reason, or the number one reason, and it's defense. And if you have a great defense, you have a chance to win a national and title. And I'd say 1B right behind that is quarterback play. They finally Absolutely. have one now after Steve Walker's graduation. Brock Jensen has stepped up and become the man. Real quick before we go, how many teams out of the Valley make the playoffs? Last year, just two made it. I, I think three make it this year. I think uh, uh, I think not enough separation between the top and bottom where there'll be enough to get wins. I think you're looking at NDSU, Illinois State, and then 
Either Northern Iowa or Indiana State. Not Youngstown. You have the I'm sorry, Youngstown. You got Youngstown you got, in? You got okay. Youngstown. I have NDSU, Youngstown, uh, Illinois State, and I'm going to pick Northern You're Iowa. You're on four. I, I think four you are a Missouri Valley in. homer, aren't you? <laughs> That's one name you can call me. I'm sure there's plenty others going Missouri out there. Missouri Valley homer. We'll be back Saturday pregame from either the Dome, the tailgating lots. Look for us out there. As Who we wants us? For the pregame Who wants show. us in their tailgating? You let us, let know, us know. And we'll be out there to get you ready for the pregame with Robert Morris. Then the in-game blog is back for another year. And then the postgame show on a busy day on Saturday as the 2012 season is ready to go.